So it's been six months since I bought this guitar, and I have thoughts. I guess the first question that we should ask is, after gigging with this guitar for six months, do I still like it? And the answer is, complicated. This PRS guitar has some really great attributes, but it also has some flaws. And fair warning for you guys, I'm going to be talking about the negative things that I've discovered while playing this guitar for the past six months. I've gigged with it, I've put it through its paces, and these are some things that weren't great about the guitar. Now I don't want to nitpick this thing to death because some of the issues that I found with this guitar, um, some of the problems are very solvable and you can probably do it in five minutes flat. But I want to list out everything just so that you have a really good idea of the setbacks when it comes to this guitar. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the setup from the factory. Um, when it arrived at my doorstep, um, it played okay, but it needed some work. And again, this was a very solvable problem. Um, all it needed was about a quarter turn uh, on the truss rod to tighten it a little bit, and the action came down nice and low, and it actually wound up playing very, very smooth and fast after that. So that's a very easy problem to fix, uh, and I don't have too many complaints about that, but I did want to tell you that you might have to do a truss rod adjustment when you first get this guitar. Another thing is the bridge pins. Where they drilled the holes for each bridge pin, they also included a countersink uh, so that they could get the, the bridge pin top down a little bit lower into the bridge. However, they went a little bit too deep with that, and it is completely impossible to get a bridge pin remover underneath the bridge pin when you're, whenever you're trying to restring your guitar. And you know the bridge pin removers that come on the end of a string winder. Uh, you can't get it under the bridge pins. And so you wind up having to use something like needle nose pliers or something like that, and it mars up your bridge pins and makes them look terrible, and it's just really, really not ideal. Last time I restrung this guitar, the nut fell off. Uh, apparently there wasn't enough glue on it. Um, that's a pretty easy problem to solve, just a couple of dabs of super glue on the front side of the nut that attaches to the fretboard and not the underside of the nut that attaches to the headstock. I learned that tip from T. Woodford on uh, YouTube, excellent luthier and guitar repair person, check his channel out. Uh, but that's a pretty easy problem to fix, it's just a little bit annoying. And probably the biggest issue that I've had with this guitar, uh, at a recent gig, I was tuning my guitar and I got to the fifth string and the tuning key, the plastic on the tuning key snapped right in half and fell on the floor. I don't know why or how, how that happened. This guitar has not been dropped. I baby my guitars and so I would know if it had fallen down at some point and it has not. Uh, I don't know if it was too hot because it, we were playing outside that day and there might have been a hairline crack in that piece of plastic and maybe it just worked itself all the way through. I don't know. Long story short, I wound up having to use a pair of needle nose pliers for the rest of the gig to tune my A string. Now, I wound up having to epoxy this thing back together that weekend because I didn't have access to a store that sold individual tuners, much less PRS tuners with the same screw pattern. It really, really put me in a tight spot that weekend. Needless to say, I was not very happy about it. So you've heard the things that I don't like about this guitar. Let's talk about the things that I do like. The fit and finish of it is great. Um, I don't see any problems with the binding around the body or the neck. It's all perfect. I don't see any 
flashing where the glue sit uh, on this, this neck joint. It's all perfect. The wood that the bridge is made out of is beautiful. There's some really cool grain features right there that's really cool. The matte black finish on top, I love that. I've been, you know, you can probably see where I put my own wear and tear on this finish and it's wearing in beautifully. I love that about it. And it sounds great, especially since I put the LR Bags Anthem pickup in it. So these guitars without the pickup in them retail for about 500 bucks. Now this is the P20E, it came with the Fishman pickup in it, which is a little more expensive. And I bought that just so that we could do the comparison between the Fishman and the LR bags on a previous video, you should check that out right now. But if you bought the guitar with no pickup in it and put the LR bags in it, you're gonna be around 800 bucks. I've got about 900 bucks in this guitar right now. So I guess we should at this point ask the final question. Would I do it again? Was it worth it? And to be perfectly honest with you, it actually pains me to say this, but no, I don't think so. I don't think that I would buy this guitar again. With the amount of money that I have invested in this guitar, I think that I probably could have bought something a little better and a little nicer. Having said that, let me say this. I love this guitar. I have been gigging with it. It sounds great, it plays great. Um, Aside from the issues that I listed earlier, this is a great guitar. And it's really become part of my sound when I play live. Even though I might not would buy this guitar again, I'm glad that I own it. All of these issues may exist because this model is fairly new and maybe they're still working out the kinks. This is an SE model. It is not made in the United States and it's not made at the US-based Paul Reed Smith factory. That to me is perfectly fine. What is not okay is there are other models of different brands of guitars that are made overseas that don't have these problems and that are very comparable price-wise. I love PRS guitars. I think they're a fantastic company. And every PRS guitar that I've owned or played has been a fantastic guitar. I have another PRS guitar that we'll review in a, in a separate video that I absolutely have fallen in love with. This video is certainly not a knock against PRS guitars. It's just some issues that I hope that they address in the future and I hope that they figure out. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for checking out Keys vs. Strings. Please like this video, subscribe, drop a comment if you have any opinions on anything I said. I'm sure you will, and we'll see you next time.